In this video, I will review multivariable differential calculus in 10 minutes. If z is a function of x and y, and then we can write dz equals delta z over delta x sub y times dx plus delta z over delta y sub x dy. So what's the physical meaning of this? Let's say if we hold y constant, and then dy becomes zero. And then delta z over delta x under constant y condition equals dz over dx. We simply converted this multivariable problem to a single variable from dz over dx given a constant y. If x is a constant, dx becomes zero, and then delta z over delta y sub x equals dz over dy. Again, if we treat x as a constant, you are looking at a single variable problem. What if both x and y change simultaneously? And then dz equals the sum of the change of z due to the change of x and the change of z due to the change of y. There are three rules for multivariable differential calculus. Rule one. When we take the second derivative of z with respect to x and y, or y first and then x, the order does not matter. We have this simplified notation here. So this can be very useful when we are dealing with a seemingly complex function, but when we change the order, the problem becomes much simpler. Rule two. Delta z over delta x times delta x over delta z equals 1. Pay attention to the subscripts. You have to make sure that the subscripts are exactly the same. That means we are trying to hold y constant in this derivative and also in this derivative. If that's the case, again, this multivariable problem is simplified into a single variable problem. We have a total of three variables, but now let's hold a y constant here and here. Therefore, this becomes dz over dx, and this becomes dx over dz in a single variable problem. And dz over dx times dx over dz equals 1. Rule 3. This is the so-called triple product rule. Delta x over delta y with z constant z delta y over delta z with constant x, delta z over delta x with constant y. If you multiply the three uh, first derivatives, the result is negative 1. It's also called cyclic chain rule. We will prove this uh, rule 2 and rule 3. So first, if z is a function of x and y, we can write out the exact differential form of z. It depends on x and y simultaneously. And also, y can be expressed as a function of x and z. Therefore, dy equals delta y over delta x uh, times dx plus delta y over delta z times dz. Make sure you have the right subscripts. And then we're going to plug in this dy. This is the expression of dy in here. And therefore, we have a much longer expression here for dz. So we copy this guy to here. We copied dz over dy at constant x here. We expanded dy here. And then we uh, multiply this and this. So we get this thing here. And we multiply delta z over delta y and this. We got a third term here. So in total, we have actually four terms. We have dz here with something times dx, something times dx here, and something times dz here. Now we move these four terms in the same side, and then we set the right-hand side to be 0. So we move this dz to the right-hand side, and then all these four terms, we move them to the left-hand side. And now we have this part times dx plus this part times dz equals 0. And this is always 0. What does that tell us? It tells us this part in this square bracket must be 0. And this part must be 0. So first, this part must be 0. Therefore, delta z over delta y times delta y over delta z 
equals 1 as long as we hold the same x variable constant so this is very important and because x y and z are dummy variables by proving this we also proved this uh, rule too so it can be just any two of the three variables and then you can say well the first derivative of variable 1 over variable 2 times the first derivative of variable 2 over variable 1 equals 1 now we have another uh, equation here this part must be 0 as well and therefore we have this part equals 0 and we move this delta z over delta x to the right hand side and then we use the reciprocal rule so it's, it becomes negative 1 over delta x over delta z and then both sides multiplied by this part and then we have a triple product we have this uh, uh, delta y over delta x times delta z over delta y times delta x over delta z equals negative 1 and also we then can take the reciprocal of this 3 so it's just 1 over this 3 uh, equals 1 over negative 1 1 over negative 1 is negative 1 so the reciprocal of this guy is x over y the reciprocal of this one is y over z and then z over x and then we proved rule 3 so this is rule 3 what if you have more than three variables let's say you have uh, five variables uh, that's fine if we have two other variables alpha and beta as long as we put this z alpha beta here x alpha beta here and y alpha beta in a subscript here this equation holds true now let me give you a more concrete example let's say uh, we're gonna encounter a, a very complex multivariable differential problem delta y over delta z uh, with x and y being held constant we can convert it to a single variable differential problem just dy over dz that's simple enough as long as you treat x and y as constants in your head okay let's say uh, we take the first derivative of this f function with respect to z and the function looks complicated but if we pay attention here it's the sum of two terms and then the first term contains only x and y so it's independent of z again you treat x and y as constants in your head therefore this part is a constant the first derivative of this part is simply zero and then we take the first derivative of the second part the second part is also simple it's a constant times cosine z therefore we simply just copy that constant here and then we just take the first derivative of cosine z which is negative sine z therefore we have just negative sine z here multiplied by this constant again this is not really a constant but look at here we are holding x and y constant therefore this very complex expression of x and y is treated as a constant so that makes a complex multivariable differential problem as complex as this as a single variable differential problem df over dz and you are looking at a constant here and another constant times cosine z that's it so if it helps you you may imagine this part is just alpha plus beta times cosine z in which alpha this is alpha alpha is a constant and beta is a constant therefore the result is negative beta sine z now let me uh, use uh, one of the calculus rules to uh, take the second derivative of g g is this very complicated here and my goal is to get the second derivative of g so i can do delta g over delta x first and then take the derivative with respect to y so if we do that delta g over delta x look at this how complicated this is um, it's very uh, difficult to do but we can use a trick here so this is the second derivative of g with respect to x and y why don't we change the order we change the order to be here we take the first derivative of g with respect to y first why so if we do that you look at the first term very complex but it does not contain y at all therefore the first derivative of this part is zero see we are holding x constant so you're looking at a constant here what's the first derivative of a constant it's zero 
And then we just need to take delta g over delta y to be delta 2xy over delta y. And x is a constant. Therefore, the result is simply 2x. This, this part is simply 2x. And then we take the first derivative of 2x with, respe with respect to x. The result is simply 2. Finally, I'll give you a problem to think about. Given this ideal gas law, PV equals RT, can you verify this rule 3 for multivariable calculus? Delta P over delta V times delta V over delta T times delta T over delta P equals negative 1. Pay attention to the subscript. When you do delta P over delta V, you need to hold the T constant. Delta V over delta T, P is constant. Delta T over delta P, V is constant. So the three subscripts are different. And also, they form a chain. If you pay attention, it's from P to V, and then V to T, and T to P, and it's a triple product here. And you can uh, evaluate the first derivatives of P, V, T with respect to V, T, P by holding T, P, V as constant, and then you can verify this is indeed negative 1. It's not 1.